So in preparation for connecting some of these other components, um, I want to build some kind of frame underneath here to lift the whole laser up so that all these things will fit underneath. I don't know if it comes across in the video, but uh, this garage is feeling pretty cramped these days, so getting everything to fit underneath as much as possible is going to be a huge benefit. Um, this right here is the water chiller for the laser tube, for cooling the laser tube. This is the exhaust fan for pulling air out the back of the, um, the work area. Uh, I think the air from here might have to run through a filter system, so hopefully there will be room for that underneath here as well. Um, given where the current work height of the laser is, I think I could raise the whole thing by probably a foot and it would still be comfortable. Um, so, yeah. So here I am painting the metal frame that I built to raise everything up. I didn't take too many videos of this, but there are more photos of the build process on my website, which will be linked below. So I cut out these brackets out of aluminum and I'm going to just try and start with sheet metal screws, uh, one of these in each, uh, on each leg to try and hold it together. Um, you can also probably tell from the paint job on the yellow frame, especially here and maybe along some of those edges. Um, the paint job is far from finished, mostly because I ran out of paint last night, um, but also I realized that I'm about to scratch it up pretty good just putting it together, so uh, I'll maybe do some touch-up paint after I actually have it assembled. So just like with the original frame here, I welded on an extra piece of 8 inch steel here um, to hold the threads for these bolts. Uh, I thought I was being really smart by drilling all these plates at once um, by basing the hole pattern off of this one caster, but little did I know the hole pattern on the other ones are quite a bit different. So as you can see that hole is going to take quite a bit of work to align, although through, I was able to easily drill out enough to make the bottom one fit, so I'm for now just going to be lazy and leave it at three bolts because that seems strong enough. With the new frame bolted on, it felt like a good opportunity to remove some of the extra structure underneath which will make room for the rather large fume extractor that I'm going to build to treat the exhaust air coming out of the laser cutter.
Okay, here I have all the electronics that I'm going to try and put in the cabinet in the side. This is the high voltage power supply for the laser. This is the controller. I'm using an AWC708C from Light Object. Uh, this is the control panel for that. This is a 12 volt, 15 amp power supply for this. Um, also some Gecko drive stepper motor drivers for the X and Y stepper motors, and then a bunch of cables. Let's get started. So the main controller more or less dropped into the old holes. I was able to use the old heat sinks for my new motor controllers, and I just had to make some little brackets and drill and tap some new holes to mount the power supplies. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm making slow but steady progress in wiring everything up. Um, here we have the controller, the stepper drivers for X and Y, the power supply for the laser tube, and the power supply for everything else. Um, what I'm starting to wire up now is the uh, power buttons for the whole thing. So um, I'm using an e-stop, uh, and so in order to use that, I'm going to use this relay here. Um, the reason for using a relay is you don't want everything to turn back on as soon as you release the e-stop. So instead, uh, use a separate button here to turn the relay back on um, after you've released the e-stop. Uh, what I'm also finding with actual wiring is that this chassis doesn't have a big enough hole here to run the wires from the button panel here. Um, back down over here, and the limiting factor is definitely these giant connectors that come from the control panel for the controller. Um, so I'm going to start by drilling a big hole here. Okay, let's see if it fits. Nice. This last clip is just showing the assembly of the 3D printed adjustable laser tube holder that I designed. Um, this is to replace the original tube holders that totally work, but are just really difficult to adjust the position of the tube. Um, this one uses two sets of thumb screws to adjust the tube up and down and horizontally in and out. If you're interested at all, download files for this will also be linked below. That'll do it for this video, and hopefully the next one I'll actually be able to show something moving around. Uh, thanks for watching.